My name is Ben, and this is Richardo right here. And today, I'm going to beef about palithoas and putting crappy corals in your tank that try to kill you. And then we are going to discuss the use of lanthanum chloride to remove phosphates. And then we have a sweet little story for you about cockroaches crawling across your eyeballs while you're inside of a 212 gallon, 212,000 gallon aquarium. So, and this show is brought to you today by saltwateraquarium.com and aquariumthreads.com. But more on that later. Now it's time for the show. <laughs> How you doing this week, Ben? I'm doing beefy. You're doing beefy? I am. It's been a beefy week. A beefy week. A beefy week. I know, I know uh, I saw on the on the on the interwebs that you had some issues with Palithoa. Yeah, so <laughs> it, well, uh, on a client's on a client's uh, reef, you know, a while back, I put some of what's known as Captain Jerk Palithoa, and it, it was it was boneheaded. But I mean, whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, whatever, sometimes you put things in your aquarium and then just later, you're like, why did I do that? I mean, we all have those stories, you know, and you mean, so you mean because Palithoa can kill you? Well, yeah, the palitoxin and the. Uh, I guess it's a little it's a little tricky the info out there, but it's one of the most it's one of the, the most toxic substances known to man. And you know I don't know like if we're sitting here talking about it. We're gonna like freak people out about should people be freaked out about owning palithoa? I don't know, man. I think it's something that we need to be cognizant of, um, you know, and absolutely don't lick your fingers after playing with them and don't rub your eyes and wear gloves because why wouldn't you do that at the same time you know i'm probably more worried about people burning their houses down or getting electrocuted in their tanks than palithoa yeah. but that said palithoa is a real thing and if you don't want to deal with a weird thing that might kill you just don't get palithoa it's really that easy well i'm also gonna uh, beginning this story i'm also gonna break something to you it's a what is it an expose and you're gonna get mad at me and viewers are gonna get mad at me i want to be mad at you bad <laughs> so so a couple months ago i posted on the facebook about how i had to remove them i've been doing this for a long time i know what palitoxin is i know what palithoas contain um but i put that i was removing these captain jerk palithoas and um i felt because i really need to claim this spot for some uh, um for some monopore digitata and some other stuff that I have in this client's tank. Yeah. And, and so I put on Facebook, like, Hey, what are your ways of that? You're removing palithoa, you know, and a lot of people were like, dude, don't touch them. And some people like cut the rock off. So the reason if you, if you could, the easiest thing is just to take it off of the rock and take the rock out of the tank. But this particular tank, I, it, they're like entire live rock sculptures that I sculpted together using EPO putty. And there's just no way to remove. I mean, you could chip, but I could break half. This is a fifty thousand dollar aquarium. That's my VIP client. If it was my tank at home, sure, I might try to do it, but I can't go chipping at this guy's tank. How how so, big is how big is the area of Palithoa? It's about, I guess, about the the size of a, a bowl, a food bowl. A food bowl. <laughs> I don't know what other kind of bowls there Thanks. are. Thanks. I'm glad you said food bowl because, you know, that is one of the metrics we use to, to talk about area covered is the size of a food bowl. It's the it's a it's part of the strange American system. It's, dude, that's like twenty three point five food bowls. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Texas. Yeah, okay, it's like it's like that big. It's smaller. OK, Wait, how do you, right. okay and, like and the problem is. When you when you disturb palithoa, they release a toxin because they're pissed off, and that toxin uh, can be in the water, and that toxin can be aerosolized, which is even worse, and that toxin can get on your hands. Um, so you know the big stories are people, you know, who like leave the palithoa out on the glass on on their center brace under the lights, or you know one person actually boiled a rock with palithoa yeah. on it. 
um, you know, uh, or their dog got to it in the trash, you know. So it, like we said, it's a real danger, but in the water, it's less of a danger um, because you are, uh, it, uh, the secret uh, to dilution is pollution. No, the secret to pollution no, is solution. dilution. The it's solution to pollution is dilution. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and uh, so that happens in your tank. And then you've also probably are running activated carbon. So that helps uh, absorb some of the toxin. Um, but like we're saying, again, and then we'll get to the rest of the story about how to get rid of them um, or our possible ways because you haven't done it yet. Um, really, don't screw around with this, right? Well, let me get to the part where you're going to be pissed off at me. Okay. So Again. after, after Even. I, after I posted it, give me the meat, give me the beef, 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 beef. Um, so I took out my pocket knife and I was like, dude, let me just remove a few. Very stupid. Yeah. So I had to admit this, but that night I didn't even really tell my wife about this either, <laughs> but so that she night, never, she never watches this show. Yeah, good. That what night as I was laying in bed, I started getting the chills and I put more covers on and I could not for the life of me get any warmer. And then I started having a thing where it was kind of at the top of my uh, deep breath. It felt painful. And but the, the crazy thing is this was uh, three months ago. And in my head, I was like, here's COVID. Got it. And then, but the next stage just absolutely went away. And so I don't know proof positive that it was that, but I mean, what else does that? It absolutely was just during the night. And wow. that was it. That sure sounds like, how many did you cut off with your knife? Um, about the portion of a small food bowl. Oh, you fucking dumb no, shit. No, 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 no. Like, I, I don't know, like a, um, maybe what a Susan B. Anthony dollar. That's... <laughs> 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 And uh, what did you do with them after that? How did you get rid of them? Um, I did. I did wrap them in a paper towel and I threw them in a trash outside of the building. Because were, you wear, were you wearing gloves? No. What did, how did you clean your knife? In the, in the sink, soap and water. I did wash my hands. But... Okay. So this is like, uh, I think I want to do one of those things like the, uh, you know, um, with the guy on YouTube who uh, does uh, bad interactions with police. And then at the end, he grades people. Uh, yeah. I think you get a C minus on all of that. Um, because oh, you passed. because no, you get a D plus then. Oh, I should have kept my mouth shut. Now. Nah, yeah. You should have kept your mouth shut. Just like when you're talking to the police, keep your mouth shut, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. people of the region world. Lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> but we're not lawyers. So don't do what we say. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, you should have known a little bit better. So, but at the same time, it's a cheap lesson. You're not dead. Uh, and and you're one of the awesomest people in the world because you're honest about being an idiot and telling other people not to be an idiot, which I think is really uh, commendable and important. So, so wait, that makes me important? No, what you're saying is important. You are just nothing. I'm just a meat vessel for important are, words. Yeah, you are as important as a small food bowl. <laughs> and maybe impotent. Impotent. We know you're impotent because your children are mine. Yes. So, <laughs> so you still need to re re remove more of these, right? Yeah. Um, I did something about a week ago, and I didn't get sick, but where I injected them with 10% muriatic. Yeah. But Man, and let me like, you know, for any of the viewers that know more about Palithos than I do, and possibly you as well, one of them I injected started spitting out tiny little white dots. The hell is that? Yeah, it's, it's, it's guts, innards. It's when you put acid into something, it gets really unhappy. I think, yeah, but what are little white dots coming out of a Palithoa? I don't know. Cocaine? I can't, I don't know. How much acid did you put inside each one? <laughs> No, it's the acid that I did. Because <laughs> no, no, um, I've got some pallies and I get rid of them from time to time when they're encroaching on things I don't like. Um, and I, um, I inject probably like 
half a mil into each one? So my syringe total was 10 mils and I used the entire syringe. On one pally? No, no, on a, on a group about the size of a cow's eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> and how, how, how much did you put into each one? Um, geez, maybe, maybe one mil. Yeah, that seems, yeah. I, I mean, you know, I don't know what it was. I'd probably have to see it to have any idea what it was, but you know, I bet you if we injected muriatic acid into you at the same proportion, white stuff would come out of your ass and mouth as well. Yeah. Little white dots. <laughs> Just a guess. Yeah. Here's another interesting thing, which yes? I've injected Mahano anemones in that tank with, I think at any given time. So this is a 320 gallon aquarium at any yeah. given time. I think I put up to tw ended up putting 20 mils of 10% muriatic into this reef tank at yeah. a given time by injecting Mahanos and nothing really got pissed off. But this time that I did the Palithoas, um, some euphilia got pissed off, nothing died, but the water got pretty murky and it, it did like milky murky and the euphilia got pissed and withdrew and um, some acro slimed up and I was like, huh. oh shit. So that I did a water change after that. Good. That might be more of a reaction to the pallies. I've never That's seen, I've never seen anything um, react like that. And maybe the pallies I have are, are big baby pallies, you know, and they don't, they're not some of the ones that are really fuck your ass up for well, all these, the people these who These particular like, ones are, are called Captain Jerk. So just know that if you do own Captain Jerk. And the problem that I have with Captain Jerk is, you know, you see one little polyp and you're like, you're like, oh, that's cool looking. But it just takes over real bad and it yeah. ate up real estate that I want. Yeah. So what's your what's your what's your plan? So uh, before I before that, it's really interesting because we don't know how everything reacts to everything else. And we don't know how everything reacts to everything else in different aquaria. And so it's probably important to go slow, which is why I was like, every time you go, inject a few. It sounds like that's what you were doing. I, I, I'm, I'm a little concerned with the idea of covering them with epoxy because then they're just, you're going to smother and die a big bat, you know, a group of them the size of, you know, my, my, my pancreas. And that's, yeah. that seems like a significant <laughs> amount. Is everyone's pancreas about the same size? About the size of a small dinner bowl. A dinner bowl. Yeah, which is different than, a, different than a, a food, food bowl. bowl. Oh, see, in Texas, we only have food bowls. It doesn't matter breakfast, lunch, or dinner. It's just, just the same food. bowl. I only have racist bowls. Oh, yeah. dude, in Texas, even in Texas, that would be considered a large bowl. That's a big bowl. I used to call these, when I made these, I called them head bowls. Head bowls. You sh your it head should be able to kind of get into them. I believe you could eat an entire box of Fruit Loops in that. I hey yes, if that bowl wasn't racist, I would yeah. absolutely do that. But I don't trust a racist bowl, which is why it's labeled. It probably prefers the regular milk and not chocolate milk. Yeah. Wait, so what's your pally plan? Well, pal, uh, I need to I need to quit. Yeah, pally plan. That's a good idea. Pally plan. Um, I need to be patient because whether it's my health or the client's tank's health, I need to um, just be satisfied with a little patch at a time. Um, I've also, man, every time I'm there, I'm also really kicking around the laser that I saw at your house. Yeah, the laser for Pally is, doesn't really kill them. It just really? picks them up. Pally are, are really good at life. They're like anti-clams, uh, you know? Clams suck at life. Pally are uh, really, really good at life. Yeah. Um, so the laser pisses them off, but I, I kind of gave up on that. And then when you, I have a pally here or there, I just inject it. And sometimes I have to inject it twice. But have you, have you, if you, have you really sat there and like, really, I mean, just burn the shit out of them. No, because it's takes so long. And then you have to recharge the laser. You only get like four minutes of working time on the laser. Um, uh -huh. And then, whereas, you know, I can get 20 mil of 10% in a second. And, 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 and in one minute, I can inject five or 10 pallies. 
So there is another thing I was doing. I'll take a, I'll take a, um, um, like a piece of vinyl tubing, but like the size of my pinky and you can go in and if you start knocking on the edge of a pally, you can usually start removing a few of them. But I also, I did that one day, but also too, I'm doing it and I'm like, I don't know how sketchy this is. Don't, that seems like, that seems like, that seems like going, Hey, I found a rattlesnake and I wanted to remove it. So I took my finger and kept flicking it on the head and it eventually kind of went away. What's wrong with that? It's, it's nothing but how is that no. worse than um like injecting because you inject you go boom 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 you know like when you botox your head inject 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 and then you're freaking done if you're picking at it it's like constantly picking and picking and picking also you're just hurting the pally where i think and this is pure speculation if you inject it with acid it goes ah, i'm fuck your fuck yeah right where uh which is different than than constantly flicking it with the stick yeah supposedly oh i should be careful with this but um there was a credible source released that bleach sodium hypochlorite detoxifies palytoxin somehow because maybe palytoxin is organic and sodium hypochlorite like tears it up i i have no idea it sounds like we need to get like paul whitby or Christine Williams to come on or Julian oh, Sprung to talk about those chemical questions. Okay. Yeah. 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 And that doesn't necessarily mean that 10% would do the same thing, you know? So yeah, that would be great to talk yeah. to them about that. Yeah. All right. Well, we, this is great because then we'll see what you decide to do and how you do it. Um, what are my takeaways from Ben's um, lame story? Lameness? No not Ben's lameness, Ben's story of being lame. Um, yeah, be careful. Put, put things that are, don't get things that are dangerous. If you get things that are dangerous, put them in, a, put them in the tank in a way you can remove them easily. The other thing you could do, actually, now that I say that, is you could lay like some uh, coral skeleton, like some staghorns on top of them, and they will attach to that, and then you might be able to pull out a bunch of them at the same time. Do you think they would like, I mean, because a uh, um, uh, Corlamorpharian, a mushroom, can they sometimes do that too? You think yeah. he'd, they'd reverse around and try to, well, let's get on this thing. Yeah, I've kind of done it. I haven't really paid that much attention to it. I've also just, you know, done that to just pile stuff on top of them so they go away slowly over time. Uh, but then I know whenever I pull those corals pieces out, they've got them on them. Oh, um, I forgot that I talked about this again a couple of days ago on Facebook and Julian Sprung, my my hero, my reef hero, fanboy. Um, but he told me, so I think I'm going to get this right, Heliacus snail. Oh, the snail. The yeah. bin, what are they, the bottle snail, bin snail, something? Heliacus. Um, yeah, you know, what's funny is all the years that I spent at aquarium stores, we would get shipments in and I would take those and throw them in the trash because I knew that they ate zoanthids and polythopos. Right. But so, now I would like them. Did you talk to Joe Caparata of Unique Corals? Yeah, yeah. Unique Corals, Joe, Joseph Caparata. Yeah, and we were will all be, to get him. Who will be sponsoring us. Oh, he will. He will, will he? I'm threatening him because we're talking about him right now. We're uh, like yeah, two he, small woodland creatures. He said those snails. And we'll look up the name of those snails and we'll put them in the, uh, in the, in the. Yeah, put a link. In the, hey, might as well link. give. We don't have a link to the snail, but we'll put a name of the snail. Yeah. Uh, anything else on this? Man, that's we kicked this horse to death. Literally polytoxin death, death, death. Yep. Poly uh, we, death. we do want to say that um, Reef Beef Podcast exists because of you, our listeners. Uh, you've been very generous. We really appreciate it. Please, if, if you can, go to the go below and click the thumbs up and maybe leave a comment and we try to read them and respond. Ben's been really good about that lately. And also subscribe, that really helps us out. Watch the video all the way through, like just press play and leave it. You don't actually have to be there. And uh, stuff like that really helps us. You can also go to reefbeefpodcast.com and click on the buy us a beer link and you could support us that way. That, that helps us out a lot. Uh, that helps us buy new equipment. Uh, it helps us get our merch ready. I'm not saying that we're going to have merch for sale soon. I'm just saying 
we're going to have merch for sale soon. And uh, that all costs money. Ben's got some new equipment, so he's not um, it's four by three anymore. Soon he'll be uh, anamorphic like me. Uh, it really helps out. And then, you know, as, as we grow, which we are, we get more expenses on the back end that we have to pay for. So um, a lot of the listeners and viewers have been incredibly supportive. It's really, really humbling and wonderful. So thank you. And we've got some ideas about how, uh, you know, we can, um, we can say thank you to you guys directly. Uh, so some of that stuff will be rolling out uh, in the near future. Uh, but in the meantime, if you could share us around, share the links around, tell your friends, tell your enemies, tell everyone. We really appreciate it. Woo! Thank you, guys. Beef. And, and we, we, we appreciate it so much that we have oh, failed. Look, I got to climb up here to show my tail. Yeah, that's, uh... <laughs> that's a nice ass. That 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 ass though. <laughs> it's making my ears go crazy. You got little nubbin ears. Nubbin ears, but I'm a fucking fly, baby. A flying squirrels. Beef, 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 beef. Hey, Richard. Yeah, Ben. One of our sponsors today is saltwateraquarium.com. Who really? I just I just ordered stuff from saltwateraquarium.com today, literally. Really, literally, 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 man, they have free shipping on all orders with zero minimum order. A lot of other places have like a $39 minimum to get free shipping. Um, so I, that is super awesome. They have a bunch of payment options, Apple Pay, Amazon Pay, Google Pay, I Pay, You Pay, We Pay, PayPal. They they'll, man, they'll, they'll figure out a way to take your money for sure. They will. <laughs> Um, they have they have uh, uh, discount programs for veterans, military, civil service. This is super cool. Healthcare workers, all of that's real cool. But I just think it's real cool. Healthcare workers are in the limelight today in the world. They do have exclusive saltwater aquarium content where they have articles and you know there's something we didn't discuss before. But they have like a, a Facebook group, saltwateraquarium.com does, where you have access to uh, Mr. Saltwateraquarium.com, Mr. Saltwatertank.com. That's Mark Callahan. If I believe it's episode number seven is when we talk to Mark Callahan. And but you have access to him on there. You can poke and prod him and ask him, like, what kind of light should I buy, Mark? You can bug him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I love that place. Uh, they've got almost everything I ever want. So it's it is one of my first go-to places when I go shopping. Like I said. Literally like half an hour before we did the show, I was online buying some stuff from them. I won't tell you what it is because it's secret, secret home lab equipment. They're uh, always but, full of secrets. But they're great. Saltwateraquarium.com. Check out the link below. Go to the website. Check out the Facebook page. So we beef, 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 beef. Hey, speaking of flying, what's up with lanthanum chloride? Oh, yeah. Some people were asking um, how I'm dosing lanthanum. And uh, so lanthanum, it doesn't bind to phosphate. I was talking to Craig, so I made sure I got my terminology right. It, uh, it precipitates into like a lanthanum crust, uh, lanthanum carbonate, I think, or, or, or lanthanum phosphate, which is an insoluble sand, essentially. Uh, although I don't know if anybody's actually looked at it to see what its structure is. Uh, and that's what you're catching uh, in your in your floss or in your sock. Right. So you're actually it becomes insoluble and you get rid of it by pulling it out. i am been injecting it into my system, into the skimmer. So I've got a solution of. Diluted lanthanum. Uh, I'm doing currently 40 mil into 3,000 mil, so into three liters of, uh, di of distilled water. And that's getting dosed directly into my skimmer body uh, at about 60 mil a day. Um, and that has, it does bring my phosphate down. It was running at about 1.4 or 1.3, which, wow. which is high, right? Because people like yeah. 0.5, 0.05, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's down. I just tested it today because uh, I wanted to see what's going on. It looks like it's about 0.3, uh, which is a big drop. Um, but but the, but it's been I've done it like over a year. I wanted to go super slow. Um, OK, that was a question I had. Do, do, well, first question. I, I think I saw it somewhere. But is this 
available to basic hobbyists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's bunches of different kinds out there. Um, I'm sure there's uh, there's some. I was able to get some um, you know, like bulk and direct. So I've got you know like a, two gallons of it. Um, when it looked like it was going to be problematic to get, I was able to get some. Uh, so you can get it like that from a dealer. I'm sure there's there's a bunch or several of products made specifically for the aquariums for for what we're using it for now. Uh, and then there's Sea Clear, which is used for pools. Um, but honestly, I would I would just uh, go online and do a quick search and see what people are using, and and use that. Uh, I don't know what the dosage is. You'll see people who do stuff that I wouldn't do with it. Um, you know, I know Mark Levinson has done it a lot um, using one of the consumer products for the aquarium industry. Um, and they do a big dose of it, you know, weekly or monthly or whatever, and then they're done. Um, I think I feed so much all the time that a weekly dose is probably not the best idea. So I wanted to go, you know, consistent removal all the time, a little bit. Uh, and what I really wanted to see, oh, by the way, it comes out in the foam. The idea is that right in the skimmer body, uh, it flocculates and it flocculates in such small doses that it should adhere to the bubbles and be exported. So does it does it has it made the color of your skimmate different, like milky or anything? It made the quality of the skimmate different when I started. It uh, okay. all of a sudden I seem to be getting much more of a foam head than I would normally get. Uh, usually it'd be pretty uh, floppy and anemic, and then all of a sudden there was a structure to it, which I imagine is the flocculate. Uh, the precip precipitate actually uh, being exported. But it's again, it's very small amounts um, um, going on all the time. So where, where I, haven't seen, I haven't seen any, you know, one of the worries about lanthanum is that it will end up uh, adhering to your glass or to your pumps or to your heaters, which is why you don't ever want to put it, you know, on an intake side of a pump because it will be like, you know, the calcium precipitation, but lanthanum. Yeah. Like scale or, or lanthanum calcium or calcium lanthanum. You know, I'm not a chemist. That's why we need Craig back or Craig on Craig Bingman, Craig Here Biggerman, Biggerman, Biggerman. Biggerman. Um, and it, uh, so I haven't seen any of that. So it seems to be working. Um, I'm getting some RTN right now, but it's spring. So that is lame, but that's happening yeah, you again. You brought that up before. Every spring you seem to get some RTN. Yeah. It skipped me the last year or two and it's hit me a little bit. So I'm unhappy right now. But um, when that comes down, I'll start upping the ratio again. Uh, I may start doing more bigger water changes as well. because More got, bigger. More bigger. I got some things in the lab that may need that attention. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, it, but like I say, it seems to be working. And I, I think we'll, we, Craig said he wants to be on the show. I, I don't know if he's listened to the show, but he says he wants to be on. Um, so we'll we'll get him on and he can he can school us about that and then tell us why all the units we use are terrible, which I'll agree with him about. And it's yeah, go ahead. Were you were you able because the, the, we all know as as reefers, the last thing you want to do is change some parameter drastically. Um yeah. so you were you were able like so okay, so Richard gets the lanthanum chloride. It comes in liquid form or dry form? Liquid form liquid form but where do you start i mean i'm assuming that there's a lot of threads all over the internet about people messing with lanthanum so yeah, th there I, was at least a baseline to start from yeah well uh, uh, public aquariums have used it for a long time and pools have used them for a long time so it's not unknown um so there is a bunch of information about that out there what we didn't know was how great it works with aquaria with our corals the information about lanthanum is out there. Public aquariums have used them. They've used them in mammal pools. We've used them in swimming pools. Ma mammal pool, is that like food bowl? <laughs> yeah, no, it's like a mammal in a pool. Yeah. Like a seal or a yeah. sea lion or a hippopotamus. Have you ever seen a hippopotamus? I love hippos. Have you ever seen a hippopotamus in an aquarium? I used to be a zookeeper. Hell yeah. Have, have you ever seen a hippopotamus shit in an aquarium? Oh, dude. Yeah. It's like they sh they just shit hay in the yeah. water. A lot of phosphate in that shit. So uh, it becomes problematic and, and people want to get rid of it. Uh, oh, is that where it comes from? Kind of? The no, use of just it? anywhere that there's phosphate that you want to bring down, people have been using it. So, and there's articles. You don't have to go scour online. Um, 
you know, there's there's articles out there that will talk talk about lanthanum. Uh, there's a there's a pretty decent one at Reef to Rainforest that Daniel Knopp Knopp wrote. Um, oh, dude, Daniel Knopp, that's old school. I have yeah, his book on it, clams, but, but it was only a few years ago. Okay. Um, and it, he did some experiments with it, and he had some good ideas. So take a look at that. Maybe we'll get that link up. I love you, Daniel Knopp. He didn't know me, but I've read his uh, books forever. Yeah. So you don't have to be random. You can get a baseline and decide what to do and and go slow. I've got my spreadsheet up here. I Is started the chemical itself dangerous in any way. We don't know. That's what Joe Waiulo has used it a lot as well in his big reef. At uh, Joe's Long the Island. first place I ever uh, jo yeah. Joe's place. Joe and Waiulo's the first person I ever saw mention it. That's where I had heard of it. So I'm still nervous about it because we don't know what it does. I guess what lanthanum does is it um, it's better at calcium's job than calcium. Okay. Right. So it will bind in the skeleton of corals. Oh. But if there's enough of it in your body, you know, muscle body, your muscle moving needs calcium. It's at some small level. And if lanthanum is in there, weird stuff might happen. So Joe used to make fun of me because I, I said, you know, we, I'm, I'm pretty hesitant about using lanthanum in our tanks because we just don't know if it's dangerous or not. And so he made yeah. fun of me, made, call me a big baby. Um, I know there's a running joke, but I never, I never got read in on it. He, he always posts his bottle. Oh, that bottle that says the AOTI says not to use me. Yeah. Um, which isn't actually what I said, but I love it. <laughs> so so there's starting points out there and like i say i started in 2019 2018 january of 2018 um and i was doing uh a uh, hundred mil a day then uh that was your starting point a hundred mil? mil of the concentration i started wow. my concentration at seven mil per liter so okay. it's a tiny amount and i started raising it up and it went down relatively quickly, actually. It started at 1.68. And then, um, what you know, were you like, testing? oh, like a, a week later, pressure? like a week, two, two weeks later, it was down to 1.23. So it did, it did drop. And then I kept upping it. Um, and then it bounces were you, around. Weren't you scared to drop it too fast? Yeah, but I, but, you know, at the academy we used to do into the 200,000 gallon tank, we used to do 750 mil of lanthanum into 30 gallons of water. And that would be pumped into the sand filter um, every week. Oh, to catch it. It would catch yeah, it. Yeah, and then the sand filters get backwashed and all that precipitate goes to drain. So uh, we've been using it for a long time and it, and it seems to help keep it down. The real thing I wanted to do was see if I could get ahead of it in my tank, right? My tank's 18 or 19 years old now. And, you know, the, the, the idea is that phosphate binds into your rock and stuff. And, and as it gets liberated out of the water, it gets liberated from the rock. So the yeah. idea I have is a slow dosing of lanthanum over time to will help, help get ahead of it in the water. Now I do feed so much that that might be a pipe dream uh but we'll see i mean i we have no idea how long it would take to un phosphate my rocks i, I mean yeah. there's no there's no way you could know that because we don't know anything about my rocks in particular uh, i mean but, supposedly supposedly what i always heard though is that how uh phosphate can bind to calcium but then you think about when biological action occurs it the, that liberates tiny amounts of acids and supposedly around that substance could like liberate more but i mean neither you nor i are chemists and it's kind of hard to say like would that truly liberate we're gonna kill snowman snowman told us to twitch our ears and he'd do a ear twitch count but i've just been sitting here habitually doing this and snowman's gonna give up sorry snowman it's gonna be awesome snowman's yeah. head's gonna explode he's like and plus yours are twitchy i mean mine's mine's go erect but but anyways, yeah, so biological action liberating phosphates in your substrate and on your rock. But it just, it's just like, how the hell do you quantify that? It's yeah. more like theoretical. Or also as the phosphate concentration in the water column drops, the phosphates in that are that are bound to whatever surfaces in your aquarium um, want to become 
uh, uh, equilibrialized, which is not a word. So which is crazy because then meanwhile you're just you're quantifying your phosphate amounts and you're like, oh, it doesn't look like it's going anywhere. But what if it is going somewhere in the body in the water column and but liberating out? I mean, that's all theoretical, but liberating yeah. out, you just keep trudging along until you see it dip down. Yep. And so, you know, real slow, you know, almost three years now. Um, and and it's funny when I got uh, depressed or whatever in January and stopped paying much attention to things. Um, I didn't, uh, I, I missed when I ran out of my lanthanum mix. And um, so in November of last year, my phosphate was at 0.65. Then by the end of January, it was up to 0.91. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong year. <laughs> Yes, in December, it was like 0.82. And then I wasn't paying attention and it crept up to 0.1, okay. 1.1. And then I replaced uh, uh, my mixture and it dropped into 0.3. And I, okay. I didn't expect it to drop that quickly. And, and now that I've been on it, it's around 0.3, 0.4. Uh, and so, like I say, once my RTN stops, uh, I don't think the RTN is related to this uh, because it, it didn't start till like a month ago, but um, it could be. Uh, as soon as that calms down, I will uh, try to get more aggressive again and we'll see what now, happens. Now, what is, what is your goal? I mean, because you and I and you without me have spoken for a long time about, you know, the kind of arbitrary goal of yeah. 0 0.05. It's like, you know, it's guess, not a holy grail. Yeah, I guess I... I, I even me gets worried at like 0.15, 1.5. That seems yeah. like a lot. So, and because I like to be, uh, to work smart, not hard. If, you know, that's why, you know, dosing into a 10 mil sock, I'm never, I tried it once and it was like the next morning, I like just threw it away. I was like, I'm never doing this again. Cause it Wait, gets- stop, stop on that point because that's the first stop, collaborate and listen. <laughs> Ice is back with a brand new edition. No, that's the first time I had ever heard of lanthanum chloride is people dosing into a sock. So, yeah. So don't gloss over that. Why did that bug you? Oh, because it's so much work. A 10, Why? it's got to be a 10 or a five micron sock because it's got to oh. be small enough to stop the preci precipitate from getting into your system. Right. Okay. Or at least that's the common wisdom. And um, a 10 in my system, at least, uh, because I don't do mechanical filtration, a 10 micron sock um, gets saturated very quickly. Oh, okay. And so it was like, I'm going to have to rinse this sock every day. I'm just not going to do that. Oh, uh, okay. You know, and well, I'm let me ask you that. Filter. Is, were, were you, would you, did you, did you ever try it or just right off the bat? You were like, nope. I did it for probably three or four days. Okay, so what were you mostly seeing? Were you seeing just detritus from your system or was it truly like the lanthanum precipitate? Uh, uh, um, well, I wasn't doing much. So because I was doing such a light dose of the lanthanum chloride, it was just organics that was clogging the sock. Uh -huh. um, you know, I, I didn't want to just dump a bunch. Of, you know, I, I, I'm scared of this stuff and I'm scared of changing things quickly. So yeah, maybe Joe is right. Maybe you are a big baby. Oh no. Look at me. Of course I'm a big baby. You're wearing a onesie for Christ's sake. Uh, so yeah. So my goal is to see if there's an easy way to control phosphate. If it was easy and maintenance free for me, uh, you know, I've always said if it was, if, if it was easy, I would bring it down, you know, because, you know, I think my corals are probably darker because of the higher phosphate. You know, I think there are, then there are some sensitive ones that may not do well in my system. Um, you know, so, you know, I, I'm not like, I've never gone out there and go, everyone should have their phosphate as high as possible. I've always yeah, said, yeah. don't, don't do what I'm doing, do what you want to do. Um, and so the goal was to see, is there an easy way that I could bring phosphate down in my system that I wouldn't throw at the wall after a week because it's too much work. So 
It's an auto doser into the skimmer. The skimmer exports by itself. I don't have to worry about anything. I don't have to do anything except what make doser. Sure. Are you, what doser are you using? Using uh, Apex Dose. Oh, okay. Did you drill a hole in the lid of the skimmer and you drip I did. it right down the middle? I did. I wanted to do it through the side, but I didn't want to penetrate the side of the skimmer. And then I just kind of decided, you know, just straight down the neck. So, so there's a hole in the top of the skimmer um, and a piece of rigid airline tubing that goes three quarters of the way down into the skimmer. Oh. And then the line from the peristaltic pump is connected to that rigid airline tubing. I was going to say, you know how I'm like a weirdo with stuff. I was going to like tell you to tap and dye the hole and put a put a barb, like a nipple. No. Penetrations no. and nipples and all that. No reason for that. It's it, No, it, I know. I know. It's silly. It, it's especially because you cannot see the top of my skimmer because it's 38 inches tall in a 40 inch crawl space. So yeah. um, so yeah, really yeah. To, to get it in, I've got to thread it against the ceiling and into the hole. And it's not that big a deal. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and I also wanted the, I wanted it to be submerged in the skimmer because I didn't ever want it to clog. Okay. You know, I didn't want it to, to, you know. Does it, wanted, would it do that sort of crust thing? Like, an I don't know, but those line? are the, I don't know if it would do the crust thing that you get like with caulk, but yeah. I certainly didn't want, that's certainly the kind of thing I want to think about. You yeah. know, how can I get ahead of these things rather than, um, then get caught by them later on. Yeah. Because it would is, be lame. Is lamp oh, go ahead. It would be lame to find out, you know, that nothing was dosing after a month because it was clogged. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, do, do you ever, I know like you'd keep it easy, but do you ever like pull up the tube yeah. and you're like, you verify that it, or I guess look at the container. Yeah, the container is constantly going down. And okay. also here's a little thing I do. I will unplug the line. I will intentionally entrain air into the peristaltic pump. Okay. I actually don't unplug anything. Just take it out of the reservoir. Um, let it run for a little while. So air's in there, then yeah. put it back in and then watch as it does its next automatic dosing that the bubbles are moving along and through. Uh, so okay. that's, that's how I know it's getting in there. Um, is lanthanum, is it relatively cheap? Um, at the amounts I'm dosing, I think so. Uh, uh, I think it's not an inexp. I, I I don't know. I haven't bought it in, since I started in 2018, uh, and that's when there seemed to be a real like uh, spike in the price of lanthanum. China raised all the prices. So, okay. yeah, yeah. I you don't remember that? No, no, well, no. Remember, you don't because you were in Texas driving around your truck going, "I'm never going to get rid of this truck." Not knowing in three years would be like, I need a truck. Ah, I need a truck. <laughs> I need a truck. Ah, my head. Um, I, I'm like Darth Maul, Darth Squirrel. I'm Darth, Darth Bunny. Darth Bunny. So, yeah, I don't know. It can't be that expensive because people uh, online don't seem to com be complaining about how much it is for reef aquariums. You know how they people will complain about everything being expensive if it's expensive? Yeah. I've well, never seen... No, and I I shouldn't be like this either, but I'm saying if it ever got popular, companies are going to come out of the woodwork, woodworks and like, you know, monetize it and like lanthanum chloride is $50 for a vial. Yeah. Well, I think, I think they also know that they dilute it. So you'd have, if you get it, you got to check the dilution. You know, it's like someone was complaining about a graduated cylinder that came with a pump, a peristaltic pump not 10 mil, not being 10 mil. They were like, I can't believe I paid $400 for this doser and this plastic graduated cylinder is off by two mil. And it's like, it doesn't matter because okay. you're never doing exact anyway. You're doing some ballpark and then you're adjusting around that as time goes. So the yeah. only reason you calibrate a pump like that is to get a language between you and the pump so you can make changes that make some kind of sense. What the right. actual numbers are is almost irrelevant because you're you're looking for an effect of what you're dosing. Right. So who cares? So I think that answered whatever you just asked me. You know, it did. It did. But um, so the other ways of removing phosphate. Yeah. Um, the, the, you, you got me more intrigued by lanthanum because if you're dosing something, you can quantify it easily so if i'm running gfo 
I mean, I can I can test with with a you know a, like a Hannah Checker and document and and I can watch it come down. But there's no way to like modulate what's going on. I mean, there kind of is, but kind of not. But there definitely is with dosing. It's easier with dosing, you know, because if you're doing GFO, um, you got to know how much. But you still do it with GFO, right? So you go, okay, my, GFO, my father, but I'm, I'm my, getting you know, ready. I, but then it's like, is it the cup? So is it the amount of GFO that you're using? Is it the rate that you're flowing water through that GFO? So there's all those things that you've got to, all those things. It's two things, um, but you, but you've got to dial both of those in and decide which is the one you want to move. And the only way you could do that is you start with some amount of GFO that you put in the reactor and some flow that you feel is reasonable through the reactor. And then you look at the effect and then you decide which of those two things you want to adjust later um, to make more or less of an effect. And you can adjust both of them if you want to. Um, That's so like, it's a lot of work compared to a doser though. A doser... Well, but I'm doing the same thing. It, it depends on the the um, the the percentage, the, the the dilution of the lanthanum chloride that you're using. So mm -hmm. I don't know what it is in any of the commercial products. I know with the lanthanum chloride solution that I have, I dilute it to the dilutions I was just talking about, right? Yeah. So I'm currently at like 40 mil per 3,000 mil of uh, of distilled. Or yeah. RO, yeah, I'm using distilled water, um, and, and and so the parameters I can change even with a doser, there's still two, my dilution and the rate of dosing. Okay, but that's so, th that's pretty simple versus trying to get a a GFO reactor like tiled in in some way, shape, or form. Here's yeah. another one: solid carbon dosing, so uh, bio pellets, and that's tricky too. Yeah, those, those never made me happy. I, I think I'm going to agree with you now, though, that the, the idea of being able to say, because on, a, on, your, on your doser now, on your peristaltic pump, you can tell it a number and you have a reasonable expectation that that number is near accurate because you've calibrated the thing and kind of know what that is. So you can just tweak that or tweak your percentage. That's a lot easier than getting well, a flow numbers, rate. There's solid numbers there. Yeah, but yeah, and putting a flow meter on... A doser no on, on, on a, yeah, it's a little bit more, you know, because you get a paddle wheel doser and then those can have problems. They need to be cleaned yeah. regularly. And, uh, and I love the dose by apex. I know I'm a fanboy, but I, I after using master flex and, uh, um, oh God, what's the, other one? the leader meters for years, you know, and changing those tubings, man, uh -huh. you just pop, you just pop the whole head off of the dose and put a new one on. It's just great. Well, if, I, if I remember correctly, the Master Flex was pretty damn expensive. Yeah, I got one under the house. It's a good place for it, right next to all the bodies. I want to talk about that for a minute, by the way. Yeah. In the past, we said when we get 2,000 subscribers, you would wear spandex. And that at a thousand subscribers, I would do a podcast from the crawl space. The crawl space, I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna change that. Dude, that's weird though. I'm gonna say 500 subscribers. At 500 subscribers. You're lowering the bar. I'm lowering the bar. You know why? Because I want us to get to 500 subscribers. That's why. Yeah. Um, you, do you see what I'm doing though by all this weird thing? Because once we get to 2000 and I'm wearing spandex, that's going to be anticlimactic. I'm already going to be have been naked on camera before then. Why would you be naked? <laughs> I'm naked right now. Under All right, at 5,000 subscribe subscriptions, Ben will be naked. Yeah, if we get 5,000 subscribers, I'll just be naked, you know, from the neck down. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's uh, if that's going to get us more subscriptions or not. Yeah, it or could have the opposite way, effect. If you don't want to see me naked, then just go away no then subscribe <laughs> but put a comment that says i don't want to see ben naked yeah just tell me yeah <laughs> anything else about lanthanum um i don't know i think we kicked that pretty good until we get an actual expert on the yeah, show okay we'll get craig on um he seemed pretty happy about coming on beef 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 hey benjamin yes Rich. ben ben there's a new site that is uh, helping us by sponsoring us. It's oh, great. 
aquariumthreads.com and they sell all kinds of aquarium threads, right? All kinds of clothing and apparel. They've got uh, uh, all kinds of stuff and uh, they directly support Mazna, right? Mazna, the Marine Aquarium Society of North America. Not only do they give the most sexy reef keepers awards every year at MACNA, their annual conference, oh, wow. but but they do a lot of education on going. They're a voice for the hobby. Uh, they they uh, they support marine aquarium education communities like clubs. They uh, help bankroll speakers for clubs. They they do a whole lot of good stuff for the aquarium hobby and industry. And this is one of their new revenue streams. Uh, AquariumThreads.com. They've got women in reefing clothes. So, or, or stuff, anything with the Women in Reefing Group logo on it. They've got Rainbow Reefers, which you and I are big fans of. We started talking about them a whole lot and what's going on with them. Veteran Reefers, Seahorse and Pipefish Keepers. Uh, they've got all kinds of stuff, whale shark stuff, um, anything you want. Anything you want. Mazda branded things, which is a nice thing to wear. And all kinds of clothing, water bottles, uh, laptop sleeves. Oh, I want a laptop sleeve, actually. Stickers, men's clothing, women's clothing, veterans clothing, Ben's clothing, any kind of clothing. They got it. AquariumThreads.com. Not only do you get a cool piece of apparel, but you also help support Mazna. And I think groups like Mazna, which there is only Mazna, needs our support. So uh, yep. I'll see you in some aquarium threads. Beef, beef. Oh, that's it. We got a story now. Yeah, um, is... we do have a story about cockroach eyes. Cockroach eyes? Oh, that's my story. Yeah. But do you remember? <laughs> do you remember in the '90s? Was that the early '90s? There was those little shorts on MTV that showed that that cartoon called Eon Flux. Yeah, where that lady's eyelashes would like catch a fly. She was like an assassin. So awesome, right? It was so cool. Did you so, do that? I uh, no. So I used to do the public programs from inside the aquarium, right inside the big tank. We do a show twice a day and take questions and talk to a presenter and all that thing. And we wore a full face mask uh, with a um, a hookah not a hookah line, but with a surface supplied air, and we would talk and everything, right? So I get in the tank and I go down, we start the show. We're about five minutes into the show and I feel something on my face. Uh -uh. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? And I had no glasses on because I was underwater and I'm talking. La la la. Yeah. Oh no. Corals are like this. And oh yeah. And th that's my favorite fish. And I feel this thing moving, moving. And I see, uh. I see an antenna in front of my eye. No, and I'm going, dude. I'm going, what the hell is going on but my 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 years as a professional performer i'm like eh, this is not so bad i can handle this no probably no one can see what's going on right from from the from the public side uh, and i i see this other antenna <laughs> so there's two uh, antennas over my eye and i'm going and i'm still talking and then all of a sudden it starts i'm trying to see if i have a better no i don't and it's it starts all of a sudden I see a leg uh, and then I feel all the legs on my eye and I close my eye and uh, I go, excuse me, presenter. I'm having a bit of a problem with my gear. I'll be back in just a minute. Uh, uh, take me off comms, please. And I go yeah. up and they take me off comms. I go, Wah! and I pull off the mask uh, and take the roach. They throw the roach and the, um, the was person- Was it one of those giant dudes? No, it was just a regular roach. Here in Texas, we the, we call them water bugs. There's giant ones, but then there's the little ones, the German cockroach. Oh, I think it was a big German cockroach. Um, it was a Nazi cockroach. A Nazi cockroach, the Red Skull roach. Yeah, yeah, yeah mine cockroach. And I was yeah. Captain California. Um, yeah, with my little shield face mask. Yeah. Uh, and so they take it off, and the, and the. And the the person who was tending me was, goes, what's going on? I'm like, oh, yeah, there's a cockroach on my eyeball. And, they oh. it there. and they're like, ah, and I go, you got to finish the show. Put it back ah. on put it down and finish the show. Um, and I was pretty proud of that moment because I was able to just hold it together and do the show. And then the ah. presenter came up and said, what the hell happened? And then I was like, and they were like, and I said, I told them the story. And they were like, oh, my God. I was like, yeah, we might want to tell people to double check the face mask 
to make uh, sure that doesn't happen again. Yeah. Oh, dude, that would freak out. That's like my third favorite story. That would have been cool if you ate it, though. Oh, I totally ate it. Yeah. Ah. My tongue went oh. up. Oh, I couldn't get my tongue to it. Because those face Did masks have a thing, like a Bane thing. So you're like, Wait, is it not I love aquariums. The full shield face? Yeah, except in that full shield, there's a thing that goes over your nose and mouth. Oh, okay. And your eye space. Oh. So I tell you, man, if it was in the mouth space, I would have lost my shit. Oh. A roach in, a my, roach in my mouth. My a roach. A you roach in a my seizure in the water. A roach in my mouth would make me unhappy. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, you have like a squirrel camel toe. Do I? <laughs> oh my god! Your squirrel hips don't lie, Shakira. Shakira. Oh, you're a <laughs> flying squirrel. Let me see your wings, baby. I don't have wings. Oh my God, dude, Beastmaster in the 80s, that movie Beastmaster, those things that would like take the people and- Yeah, that was my favorite movie. I had, uh, we had a friend who worked at MGM and took uh -huh. us on a tour of MGM and showed us the Beastmaster poster. He was a producer and he was like, yeah, this is a piece of shit we picked up. And I was like 10 and I was no. like, I love that movie. And there Do you know that I like I was a fucking idiot. Name, I still know the name of his ferrets, Kodo and Poto. Kodo and Poto. And then yeah. we went and then we went and got on the set of War Games, which was pretty cool. Oh, man. All of which has nothing to do with reef aquariums. But that's OK. We can diverge sometimes. Yeah. So I think that's our show. I think so. I think we're done. Yeah. yeah. So uh, again, uh, please support us in any way that you feel comfortable doing. Uh, subscribing, liking, sharing. Go to reefbeefpodcast.com and uh, click on buy us a beer and buy us a beer. Uh, and we will use it for beer and other things. Uh, yeah. And we also want to thank our sponsors, saltwateraquarium.com. And what's the other one? Aquariumthreads.com. Yeah, that helps support Mazna. So yeah. thank you all. And uh, we'll see you next week, yo. Bye, guys. Pause.